Fingers crossed they're all right to get us back. Fingers crossed they start, first off. I thought it was about to decapitate me. And will it sound okay? Ah. We do have an engine management light. So, hello everyone, welcome to the channel, hope you're doing well. You may have already guessed by now that we are on the train, the Great Western Network Rail System, because Toby and I are off to go and pick up two Range Rover Evokes from Westbury, and Macaulay is off, and even if he was here, he can't put two vehicles that heavy on his two-car setup. He has he's something light on the truck, and something heavier can go on the trailer, so I thought, why not? Me and Tobes will hop on a train, sometimes they're bloody expensive, but on this occasion we got both of our tickets for 35 quid, which is still more expensive than driving, but it's an easy way we can go. It's Fridays is our day for doing a bit of admin, for sorting out our weekly videos, so we can do that while we're sat down. And we've done our first leg. We're now at Bristol Temple Meads, waiting for our uh, changeover onto the 1045 towards Salisbury. And then when we get there, we're gonna pick up these two Range Rover Evokes Hopefully, they are in a good enough condition for us to drive back, but we are gonna find out. As you've seen probably in our previous videos, we're picking up Range Rovers from further away. It's not always as straightforward as you think. Keep your fingers crossed for us. We're gonna get on with the rest of our journey, and then we'll have a look around when we get there. Could be going to Copart, all Westbury auctions, all of which I like right here. So essentially it is just, it's literally it back onto the other side of this train station, but I think we need to go up here, across the bridge that's over there. We might be able to cut through a trading estate, or we just, just go on the road. Either way, it's not very long, so we may as well just go the proper route. train here in the morning to come to the auction, but that'd be a bit of a pain, wouldn't it? Especially if it's raining, sitting on the platform half an hour. I don't know, I don't think I'd better stay awake on the train. That fence wasn't there, that was going to be my shortcut. Shout out to A Plates, they clearly make 3D plates. Love them. But tweets their own. Right, here we are then. Uh, I imagine our car's gonna be parked in the overflow car park, but we'll need to go in, get keys and paperwork first. And I need a little wee wee again. I think they would have been having a uh, commercial sale today, which would have been these ones, but I'm keeping away from the commercial for a minute. I'm just buying exclusively Land Rovers, it seems. Right, we've got all our documents. Looks like both have got two sets of keys, service history, uh, obviously V5s. And we have got another set of Range Rover headphones. So I think that means that the older one, which is a higher spec one, I think, might have screens in the back, but maybe it's just for the passenger. Don't know, we've got to go to the uh, gate. 
give them our pass out slip and they will tell us where the cars are. Got a very fetching pink key case for this one. Look at that. Pink anodized. I'm going to guess that is for the older one. Yes, it is. Higher spec, white with black wheels, I think. It's just that type of car, isn't it? Right, so we're looking for, they're both in the same area. One white one, one black one. Oh, there's the white one for a start. And I imagine that's our black one. Fingers crossed they're all right to get us back. Fingers crossed they start, first off. Like I said, it is that type of car, isn't it? White, black alloys, number plate stuck on ridiculously. Oh yeah, and it's got like the red and black interior as well. Yeah, smoked out mate. So, let's have a look at the boot first. Good start. Oh, it will do it. Just needs a bit of encouragement. Christ! Oh, we need to look into that. I thought it was about to decapitate me. Excellent. Right. Well, it looks okay, but we won't venture too close into there. Let's try and... It probably won't shut now. That'd be the next problem we have. No. Good. <sighs> Saw my life flash before my eyes then. Looks all right inside, if a bit grubby, maybe. Uh, this one's on slightly high... Mm, let me try and remember. Let's see, what have we got? Yeah, this one's on 110,000 miles. It's a 2012, so it's an early one, but it is a 2.2, .2, which is, you know, arguably the better engine to have. Um, it's got lots of... I hate these little door pocket... little rubber things. And we came here and there's that Swift and it had a load of those in. I don't know, I just tacky rubbish. Right, so that's that one. Let's see if it starts. Can't see. This is the one that it's got the headphones for, but I can't see that we've got head for, uh, screens in the back, so it must be to do with the screen in the front. Will it start? And will it sound okay? On the button. Okay. It's warning us ignition's on, but you know, can live with that. Oh, it's got auto parking, I think. Is that what that is? Park assist, searching. Searching for a space, imagine that. All for the princely sum of, what do we pay for this one? About five and a half grand, I think. Right, that starts. Oh yeah, here we got our screen one and two, so I guess. Oh yeah, no way. Let me borrow that camera a minute. Here's what the driver sees, which is your sat nav and whatever, but if you come around to the passenger side, you can watch the Octonauts. Toby probably knows all about them. That's quite cool. Right, I like this one. That's good. Arguably a nicer looking one. Black, silver alloys. Uh, all the tyres look good. It's got a nice cream interior, this one. This one is a 2 litre Ingenium engine though, so... Um, maybe more risky, but... We've sold plenty of them now. There are plenty of them out there. Are they more risky than other ones? Potentially, yes, but nice panoramic roof as well. So in fact, this one seems like this one could probably potentially be the higher spec. Or are they both HSEs? Not sure. Will the boot open and not murder someone? Yes. That is a vast improvement. Although it might want some aligning because that doesn't look very good, does it? Where it's been munching itself. Got a spare wheel in that one. We can't check the other one because it will just chop my head off. Will it start? Lovely. We've even got heads-up display in here, which someone's covered up with the Kevin and Perry Go Large DVD. Does that mean we've got a DVD player? That sounds pretty good for a Ingenio. Um, but this one is on 0% fuel, so we're going to need to go to a fuel station first thing. Which one do you want to drive, Topes? Don't mind. What a gentleman. All right, well, let's get our stickers off and then we will hit the road. Yes, yeah, so this one's a 16 plate on only 69,000 miles. HSE dynamic. Will this come off easily? Didn't think it would. It's a bummer. 
Might just leave it on there, you know. At least we didn't buy this one. Left in gear, dodgy handbrake. Do not put handbrake up. Fair enough. Can't see there's anything too much that exciting around here today. Usually I like to see something, you know, there's something out here that's a bit special, but all run the mill stuff. I'll drive this one because it's classy and modern and you know young and you can drive the other one because it's a bit shabby. <laughs> Nothing to do with you, but you know, enjoy. Right, so here we have both the cars. They actually seem pretty good condition. I mean, they're gonna need some cleaning up, things like that, servicing probably, but that's fine. That's the sort of thing that we expect when we're buying cars from auction. I would like to have a check, find out how these cars score with vehicle score. So I'm gonna input our registrations. First one being Delta Echo 16, Victor Hotel Hotel. Into vehicle score, it's going to give us a score from 1 to 999. You can guess at home which one you think is going to score best out of the two. I think I probably know already. This one is 872 out of 999, which is amazing. Uh, we've got all the information here that we could want good parts, bad bits, um, score breakdown, vehicle MOT history. It's had advisories on its last MOT for brakes, so we might be needing to do that. We'll check that out on our drive back. We can also look at performance, tax status. All that good stuff. I've got a feeling this is quite a low tax one. £190 a year. Not that low. Some of these, if you get the two-wheel drive manual, they're like 30 quid a year to tax for a you know SUV. Seems absolutely crazy. So, 872 for the black one. And is it really a fair competition? 12 plates, obviously older. Foxtrot Echo 1, 2, November X-Ray Papa. That's pretty good still. 692, not bad. Again, bad bits. Well, the things it's marked it down for is being over 10 years old and over 100,000 miles. Well, we knew that anyway. Let's just have a quick look at what it says about tax on this. Just be curious to know. This one being the older engine. £305 a year. So it pays to have the 2 litre Ingenium in a sense, but not in the sense of if you have problems with it. Do you know what's really interesting? Someone said to me earlier, oh, Westbury, that's where they've got the uh, chalk horse on the hill, wasn't it? And I was like, yeah, I suppose it is, but I've never seen it. Have a look over there. Shows you how oblivious I am 99% of the time. I'm just so, so laser focused on my business and the, the cars. I haven't seen a giant white horse on the hill every time we've been here. Anyway, that is it. The black one does score slightly better, but that's not surprising because it is the newer car with less miles. I think they're both a HSE spec. It turns out they both got panoramic roofs. I don't know if this one's got the dual screen type thing or the self park. So I guess this one is slightly better specced, but either way, I'll be happy if they both get us back. So we're going to hit the road because we can be back hopefully by about two o'clock, get on with some proper work and yeah, I'll let you know how it goes on the drive. Right. We need to get to a fuel station because I'm running on fumes. So it tells me there's an SO one mile away. So let's go. I think what I'll do is halfway back, I'll swap over between these two so I can give you my impressions on both of them. Let you know which one I prefer. Or if there's any quirks with either of them. Can't tell if discs need cleaning off a little bit. I've just got a wheel bearing going. There's a bit of chuffing coming on from somewhere. Now, obviously, I've been buying quite a lot of these Evokes recently and Discovery Sports and Range Rover Sports, they have been the three kind of Land Rover products that I've been buying recently because obviously the market's dropped and I just think they're really good value. And I know a lot of people are scared off by the two litre Ingeniums, but I like to have a look around and see what other traders and things are doing. And Jamie Capel, you may have seen in our previous video, the owner of Car Key, he was saying, I think he just said it in a social media post, not necessarily to me. He just sort of said, we love Discovery Sports at the moment because they represent such good value. And they do, and same with these Evokes. I think where there's some, you know, kind of wariness of them, certainly from dealers not wanting to spend a lot at auction, it's driven the prices down. But just because maybe 50% of the market is decided that it's not something that's worth buying, it's driven the price down. But the other 50% are still absolutely desperate to have them. So the retail prices seem to stay strong. So I think in car sales, you have to follow trends. You have to be able to adapt. I know a lot of people say they like to niche down, 
and have one type of car and it seems to be like a running thing. People say, if I have that, then it's easier to cross sell into the other thing. And lots of people like to start out being like, I don't know, like a Citroen C1 or a Corsa, because it's easy to keep parts on the shelf and whatever. And that may work when you're starting up. I used to sell a lot of Corsa Ds, but in reality, I think you need to have a variety of stuff to keep your stock actually moving on a regular basis to keep you busy. And I think you need to keep an eye on what's you know the best thing to buy at the time i can't think of any others in the past off the top of my head but things were ever decided smart cars for example in our area we bought a few and they sold really quickly and we went through a little period where that was great same with the courses when i started out you know you could buy a courser for 800 quid clean it up do a service make it look presentable maybe get the timing chain done if it needed it and you could sell it for two and a half grand and that was you know you'd make maybe a thousand pounds 800 quid across it which would be amazing at that time. But then those cars just go out of fashion and it may well happen for Evokes and Discovery Sports. They're never gonna be undesirable because of what they are, but they might be less desirable. So, you know, make hay while the sun shines really. That's why I'm buying a few of these. But the other trick is to make sure that you haven't got too many of them when the market does take another kind of nosedive downturn because then you may have a hundred thousand pounds worth of stock and the market may drop 20%, which is unlikely, but it may it won't do that across the board, but it may on certain models, and then, you know, you've lost 20 grand overnight, haven't you? I wonder why I'm roasting. I've got the heating set to high. Has this got cooling seats? No, I think we've just got heated seats. It's a shame. Today is the type of muggy kind of day. I could use some cooled seats. I am concerned that we've come down this on a Friday because traffic looks quite heavy. So I'm hoping it's not going to take us forever to get home with lots of diversions. That would just be upsetting. We've got a reversing camera. That's one thing I can report so far. Right, grab some fuel and I'll be back. Right, Toby says, just tie it in the gate. In the gator? In, jeez Louise, I can't speak. Indicator is telling him that his front left is low so we just pull up to do that quickly about 10 psi down do you drive okay yours is a little bit of smoke is it yeah. they can be when you leave an auction though because they've been sat around for a while traffic must be quite heavy because it's telling us one hour 24 to get back and it's usually about 110 so what time does it say? Currently arrived back at two minutes past two o'clock. If we get anywhere near that, we'll be winning at life. But having come back from Westbrook before, I've ended up driving through the centre of Bath. God knows how. Ah. We do have an engine management light. Just come on. That's good, isn't it? Does seem to be driving okay, though. If it tells me on this screen. Right, that's for all you. Westbury Ford, shout out to Westbury Ford Mativ. Despite the engine management light, this is actually really nice to drive. I didn't like these originally because I think we had some come in as customer cars to have MOTs and servicing, etc. And having driven it across to the MOT centre, I just thought they were really harsh. That might have been because they put like aftermarket large wheels on it. I can't remember, they might, might not have done, but they were just a really firm ride and I thought, that's horrible. That's not what you want from something that's got a Range Rover badge on it. But the more I've driven them, the more I've come to like them. They are comfortable and easy to drive. And this two litre Ingenium, albeit potentially problematic, we have got an engine management light on, which I'm gonna guess at this early stage is EGR related. Uh, they do go well for what they are. And our air conditioning is working flawlessly now to the point where I think I can actually bake my lower back a little bit with a heated seat. Right, I'm gonna keep driving. I will see you when we swap over into the other Evoke. So we've just pulled up and stopped in the middle of Cheddar Gorge, I thought. It's about two thirds of the way back. It's an absolutely gorgeous scene. We've got mountain goats to one side of us and mountain climbers to the other. I even saw a mountain climber go past with a baby on her front. I'm hoping she wasn't climbing like that, but you never know. 
Uh, we're gonna swap over so I can drive that back. This seems to be driving absolutely spot on despite the engine management light, so I'm probably gonna check that when we get back. Can't see any problems with it. I think it's gonna be some kind of exhaust temperature or exhaust filter or something to do with the EGR. Um, these seem to be quite common for it, especially if they don't get driven much. So we'll check that out when we get back. So far, very happy with this car. Toby says there's a couple of things worth checking out on the other car. So we'll hop in that one and do the last little half an hour back and sum it up over a cup of tea. We're now in the 2.2. Bit more of an agricultural engine, but you know, theoretically more reliable and judging by the fact that this one doesn't seem to have any engine management lights on and the other one does, you could well believe it. We do have a warning flashing up for reverse camera or park camera, it says. Oh, it just says camera system fault. And Toby did say that he thought maybe the parking sensors were broken because they were just going off constantly when he put it in reverse. He may have just forgotten that he's got a tray plate on the back which is probably covering a parking sensor, which tends to be what happens. Let's see how this one compares. I'm gonna crack the heating up on the seats as well. Is it gonna be as smooth? Is it gonna feel older? I don't know, actually, pretty much everything you're looking at, despite a four year age gap, looks pretty identical, down to the steering wheel, gauges, controls. I thought this would have a more dated steering wheel, but it doesn't. Or the, the other one doesn't have a newer steering wheel, I guess. It's easy to forget how like incredible this gorge is just because it's on our doorstep. I mean, we do film it quite often when we come down through here, put a time lapse on or something. I'm sure people aren't that interested, but I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, back to the car. Maybe it feels a little bit firmer, but could be imagining it. And as far as the uh, camera goes on this, that is a pretty common thing on these Evokes. They are quite expensive. I think if you go to Land Rover, the camera is about 500 quid or something obscene, but you can get them on eBay for about 120 quid, like an aftermarket one that's, I think, probably even a better quality and resolution than the Land Rover one. So hopefully that's the case with this. 120 quid is pretty minor as far as warranty or prep repairs go, to be honest. Right, quick change of cameras because my GoPro died, but I think uh, I got cut off before I said that uh, I should have about 3,000 pound margin in this car. Some of the Range Rovers that we've looked at, I had a margin of maybe 7,000 gross before we take out all the expenses, cost of VAT, et cetera. Um, but this one's obviously a lot cheaper. Those were like 25 grand cars. This is retail a 9,000 pound car which I think looks really great value I don't think this one will hang around at all I think it will go really really quickly um, even being 110,000 miles it's not going to put people off because it makes it obtainable and we should have three grand gross margin ish roughly before we take out all the fees expenses etc um, which we will have to do but with the way everything's going looking at the books um, with the overheads we've got, the units we're selling, I don't think we can sell much more than about 40 or 50 a month. I mean, that's pretty damn good going. And I'm still not making the profits I want to make, unfortunately. So it's either cut back, um, you know, do more with less, or just try and earn bigger margins, which is why I'm going for the riskier stuff like this. Apologies if my camera keeps sliding around. So the long and short of what I was trying to say there basically is uh, we still have a reasonably good margin in this car. I know some people will hear me saying 3,000 pounds, they're like, oh my God, you're gonna make 3,000 pounds in that car, that's loads. When you've got the overheads I've got and all that sort of stuff, it's really not. It just whittles away to nothing. It's, it's not as easy as you think, you know, all the overheads taken out of it, it's a lot of money. You need to be very busy to make a profit. So I would say this three grand margin across this, then take off 120 quid for the rear camera, maybe parking sensors, wants a service, um, probably wants an MOT and etc. Maybe if you left for two and a half grand, two, two fifty, and you get fifteen hundred quid out of it, once it's all done and told, then you know that's that's been worth doing. I will probably by this point I've now decided I'll name this video something clickbaity like I picked up two evokes and they were full of faults or something like that which in a sense is true. This one has a camera fault, possibly a parking sensor one. The other one's got an engine management light, 
which we are yet to diagnose. But actually, I think they've both been good buys. You have to kind of expect that there are going to be some things you need to fix. And that's why you need the capacity to fix them in order to make the margins that you want to make. The most important thing is both of them seem to drive absolutely spot on. No suspension knocks, bumps or any of that weird sort of stuff that we've got to sort out. They all had good tires. Um, we do need to sort out that boot, don't we, on that other one actually. Oh no, this one that I'm driving now that tries to decapitate you. Yeah, that would be interesting to find out. Maybe I'll do a follow-up on that. Um, Where's that? A weird kind of just sunglass holder. Bloody hell. I don't know if you would have heard that. What the hell that was? It was a bloody jet going over. Anyway, that's enough waffling for now. We'll get back to the garage. We're only about 10 or 15 minutes away now, and we'll get a cup of tea on the go, first and foremost, my first of the day. Then we will plug the other one in and see what it's saying in regards to that engine management light. Let's start doing a bit of research on the two problems that we've got with this, which is the camera and the boot. Right, so we're back at the garage, parked up the top here, both looking very nice, I must say. In fact, it just goes to show what I was saying about these being kind of in demand at the, pop at the moment, popular for us at least. Someone's already seen this at the top of the forecourt, come in and they've booked a viewing for tomorrow morning. So we have explained, it's literally just come from auction and we need to plug it in and find out why it hasn't, or why it's got an engine management light. But they're happy with that. Surprising. A lot of people would think, oh, some people wouldn't be interested in a car if it's come from auction at all. Especially if they then say, oh, it's got an engine management light on, we need to check it out. Some people would just like, oh, I wouldn't touch that, oh, dodgy. Others are sensible. So we're going to plug it in, see what comes up, and then uh, we'll have an idea. It might be something that's just EGR, might clear it, see what happens. Maybe I'll drive it home overnight. We will see. Let me use a little top don on this instead of the auto, just because it's so easy. Right, so we're going to do diagnosis, do an auto search, it will scan through, find our VIN number, should tell us what car we've got. It tells us a Land Rover. Right, Land Rover Evoque with a two litre diesel. Is this the correct information? Yes, it is. Now we need to do a health report. It will scan the whole car. There we are, we can already see that we've got. Something in the engine control module. Let's read the fault code. Exhaust gas recirculation, insufficient flow detected. I called it, I knew it would be the EGR. Um, so, I am going to go back. Here is our whole thing that it's done. I'm gonna create a report, save it as a PDF. So here it is, and we can share it. So I'm gonna Bluetooth it. Send it to my phone, sending file to Joe's iPhone 14. So, when I now clear this, we will have that record should it not come back up again. It seems to be these two liter Ingenium engines, they do not like sitting around because that white one over there, we had a very similar thing happen as well. So we're gonna clear our DTCs. Now it's saying it's all clear. Fire it up and the engine management light is off for now. We know it drives absolutely spot on and I know it's a common thing on these, so I might take it home tonight and then we'll see how it is tomorrow. Right, so there we have it. There's our two Evokes back from Westbury. I think they're both pretty solid buys, to be honest. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that EGR. It might just need a treatment. It might need a new EGR, worst case scenario, but there should be enough money in it. And this one, obviously, we need to look at the boot and the reversing camera, but still, I think we're going to be okay. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you're one of my subscribers, when we hit 75,000, I'm giving away a £2,000 Type Warrior watch completely free. And if you can't wait around to see if you win that watch, I'm running a competition with that, an RS5, many other things on my competition website, feelgoodcompetitions.com. Head over there, use the code TOBY10, and you'll save yourself a few quid at the same time. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.